So when dealing with asteroid impacts, what we're really dealing with is the conversion we have of, of, of energies. So we have, imagine we have a, a rock, right, and it falls towards the earth. And we have the ground down here. And what happens is the motion energy of this rock gets converted when when the rock hits and forms a crater and sprays all sorts of, of, of stuff out, uh, gets converted into heat and throwing things around and so on. So all we really need to do is look at uh, how much motion energy the rock has and uh, and compare it to something that is uh, convenient. So motion energy depends on two things. It depends on the mass of the object that you're look the object that you're looking at, and it depends on the speed. Okay. So in the case of an asteroid falling, we often use the escape speed, or essentially the um, the minimum speed you need to throw a, a rock up in the air for it to leave. It's also the same speed that the rock would hit the ground if you simply dropped it from the top of the atmosphere. So you drop it from, from or say, from infinitely far away, it's going to smack into the ground at a particular speed. Uh, that speed is um, about 22,000 miles an hour, or about 10,000 meters per second, and I'll generally abbreviate that right, as 10 to the 4 meters per second. Um, the mass of the, of, of the rock depends on the size, so it depends on the volume. But we happen to know that a rock has uh, a, a mass of about 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So if you think of a meter cubed, um, that's about the maybe the length of your arm, and make a and, and if you make a, a nice little cube of it with one meter on each side, that would weigh about 2,000 kilograms, or have a mass of 2,000 kilograms, sorry. Um, so let's imagine, let's, let's do the calculation with that, and then, and then we can, one, one can always, one can always expand it. The equation for motion energy motion energy which is also called kinetic energy is simply the following. There's a one half the mass times the speed squared. Now this is what's going to be there are a number of things that are important here. First of all, the speed is squared, which means if you have an object that goes twice as fast, it'll have four times the amount of energy. If it, if it if it's going three times as fast, it has nine times the amount of energy. The mass becomes important, so something that's twice the mass um, is tw has twice as much energy. But we're going to be primarily interested in size, and uh, and so so with size, this mass turns into a density times a volume. Okay, so we have density and we have volume coming in. And volume, if we're thinking of a, if we're thinking of a, uh, um, uh, if, we're, if we're thinking of a sphere, The volume is four thirds pi r cubed, where, where r is the radius, and that could be thought of as a size. If we're thinking of a cube, then that's simply the side cubed, 
notice how in each of these cases the the um, the volume goes up as the cube of the size of the object. Okay, so the units of this, if the mass is in kilograms, so the units, if the mass is in kilograms, and the speed is in meters per second, okay, and we're going to be squaring it, this will come out in a unit which is called a joule. And then we usually compare this with with some with, with something else. So let's imagine the following: we have a more one meter square, uh, one one meter cube um, rock. So it has two thousand kilograms. It's going at ten thousand meters per second. So then the energy that we're dealing with is one half two thousand kilograms times. 10 to the 4 meters per second squared. Alright, so the 2 here cancels with the 2, so we'll just get a 1 there. So we get 1,000, so that's 10 to the 3. This is 10 to the 4 squared, so that's 10 to the 8, and then 10 to the 3 gives me 10 to the 11 joules. If we compare this to an amount of energy, we find that this is equivalent to about 25 tons of dynamite. And this is often how we compare things. So we have, you know, we compare it to a, um, an amount of some explosive. If eventually when this rock gets big enough, if we're thinking about it, the, we'll compare it to nuclear, nuclear bombs. One nuke, they're generally measured in megatons so you know might be you know 10 or so megatons of TNT and that's that's 10 million tons of dynamite that's the unit and so this so this we so we have that. So let's let's let, let, let's do um uh let's do another calculation. Let's imagine that instead of a one meter cube, we have I'm gonna move this down just a little bit. Um let's imagine that instead we have something that is say ten meters on a side. So that's about thirty feet. I don't need to go through the entire calculation again. All I need to do is say, okay, the side went up, the side went up <clears throat> by a factor of 10, which means that the volume increased by a factor of 10 to the third or a thousand. If the volume went up by a factor of a thousand, that means the mass went up by a factor of a thousand. The speed is going to be the same. So then I, I can use this, I can say the energy of this rock falling is 25,000 tons of TNT. And we can do this, we can scale this up to whatever size we want to, um, whenever we want to, to compare. If, if it gets big enough, we can compare it to nuclear bombs.